YouTube, what's going on? This is Kevin the Tech Ninja, and this video is requested by one of my Scope Squad members. What the heck is a Scope Squad member? Well, that's actually someone that follows me on Periscope, and they consistently communicate with me directly. So make sure you're following me on Periscope, number one. And number two, the question is, what is the perfect smartphone? And that is such a hard answer. So I decided to bring a couple heavy hitters, some people you may know, um, to actually answer this question. We have QB King 77, Tim Schofield. We have our Armando Ferreira, and we also have Ash Taylor as well. And we're gonna talk about this and discuss what is our perfect smartphone. Let's do it. What's up guys, Armando here, and Kevin asked me to build my perfect phone. Only in a pipe dream would that happen. But let's go ahead and pretend that these phones are like Lego sets and we can pretty much build our own. So I would start off with the HTC M9 body. I really like that style, I like that it's metal, I like the curved shape. So we'll do that as the body. In terms of screen, definitely the Galaxy S6. Exactly the way it is, it's perfect. Personally, I like IPS, but that Super AMOLED, especially in direct sunlight, is amazing. In terms of speakers, I'd probably say front-facing speakers, and I know the HTC M9 already has front-facing speakers, but I actually like the Idol 3 better. They're a little bit more hidden, and you almost don't know that they're there, and I like that. They're more sleek, and even though we're saying HTC M9, it would not have that HTC logo on there. Definitely not. In terms of battery life, 3,000 milliamps, and I don't care if it's slightly thicker, I'm okay with that, but it has to have at least a minimum of a 3,000 milliamp battery. Camera, Galaxy S6, no doubt without any questions. IR Blaster, which both the M9 and Galaxy S6 have, but definitely a must. Wireless charging, and that's pretty much it in terms of operating system, of course, stock Android, but in a pipe dream, that would be my ideal phone. No hardware, only capacitive buttons, pretty much it. Hey everyone, Tim Schofield here, and Kevin, thank you so much for asking me to do this. I'm here to talk to you guys about my version of the perfect smartphone compiling various aspects of phones, which makes Android so great just because you have so many various options in the marketplace. Now let's get right to it with the basics. Design-wise, I'm gonna go with the Galaxy S6 Edge. As uncomfortable as it is to hold at times, I just really enjoy the aesthetics, the way the things spill off the screen. And speaking of screen, I'm just gonna go with the S6 as well. Not when it comes to screen size though, I wish it was a little bit larger, maybe 5.3 inches. In between that 5.5 and 5.1 inches, 5.3 is my sweet spot. And again, let's go with the Galaxy S6 camera. I'm hard to debate between the G4 and the S6, but overall I find that the S6 camera has suited my needs a little bit better. Now I know I said design of the S6 Edge, maybe a thicker S6 Edge, just because I want a bigger battery. Probably the Droid Turbo's 3,900 milliamp hour battery along with turbo charging or fast charging, whatever you wanna call it. Battery life's a big deal for me and I would definitely sacrifice thinness of the phone for a bigger battery. Now when it comes to playing games, watching videos, listening to music, I do that a lot on my phone, so front-facing speakers are a must. So honestly, any decent speaker with front-facing, I'm just gonna go ahead and go with the HTC One M9 speakers, but Nexus 6, Idol 3, both of those have suited my needs well as well. And I also want three to four gigabytes of RAM and no aggressive RAM management, Samsung looking at you, and no memory leaks, Google looking at you. All right, now some extra things that I personally use all the time. A micro SD card slot's a must for me. And also an IR blaster. I think it's just the most underrated thing in a phone. I don't know why Nexus devices don't have them, but an IR blaster is a huge thing where you can control your TV, all that good stuff. And then finally, when it comes to software, I'm more of a stock Android kind of guy, so I'm gonna go with the Moto X software with their stock take on things with their various tweaks that are useful and then also adding in maybe Samsung's multi-window function which isn't perfect but it's probably the best one out there right now. Once again Kevin thanks so much for having me on here. Guys go subscribe to him he makes great videos and uh, have a good day everyone. Hey guys Ash here. So Kevin asked me what my perfect phone would be. Let's find out. Firstly the body would take influence from the OnePlus One. I love the materials and I think the size is great. If we were to talk about new technologies, then the body would be unbreakable or at the very least be more robust than what they are now through rugged parts or even flexible components. Onto the screen and that would be taken from the LG G4. 
I don't really care for vibrant colors and I can live with screens that aren't say the most brightest, but what I do want is a pretty accurate one. The quantum display seen on a G4 is more accurate than others, not to mention it hits 98% of that DCI color space. Onto new technologies and my screen would be scratch free and remain scratch free. I love listening to music, so I'd have to grab the audio circuitry from the HTC One M9. The onboard speakers are some of the best I've heard, detailing some depth, which is great for small speakers. I nab the internals too, as they're able to drive more of my headphones, but let's be honest, we need more focus on audio. It's still pretty shameful. Powering the lot would be the Snapdragon found in the LG G4. Now, this isn't perfect by any means, but it's a pretty great SoC and deals with everything I need to throw at it. I'm actually pretty happy with where we are in terms of speed, but the efficiency within the whole process can still be improved. So the biggest issue of all, battery life. I'd have to take the battery from the Droid Turbo. Its 3,900 milliamp battery is large, gray, and should power the device for any needs. I don't really care if the device is slightly thicker, I just want it to last. The software would obviously be stock Android. It's my favorite of all the flavors you can find today. But talking about ideals, we'd be able to get rid of the default bloatware without root, and let's add unlocked bootloaders to that too. So my perfect smartphone would include all of these elements, but additions such as the fingerprint sensor from the iPhone, essential new sensors such as barometers and altimeters to check things like weather, temperature and elevation, but it doesn't have to stop there. Include a carbon monoxide and a smoke alarm sensor too. I mean, to me, it makes perfect sense. So this would be my perfect smartphone. Thanks guys, back to you, Kevin. Hey guys, I'm gonna keep mine really short and simple. I want my guests to really shine on this one. But as far as the materials that's being used, I really liked the iPhone 5. I think just the way the iPhone 5 metals that was actually used, it just felt like a very solid phone. I just, I'm just a fan of the metal. It just feels like a more premium phone and when I drop a metal phone, it actually dents more so than scuffs and I can live with a dent rather than a scuff. Give me the S6 edging as well with my metal design. Now battery life, I, I need to have at least a 3500 milliamp battery or some type of just super tweaked out battery like the OnePlus One. Now back to camera, I'm gonna have to give the nod to the S6 when it comes to the camera. The S6 takes amazing images and I just, I'm just in love with the S6 camera. Now at times in low light, it does get a little yellowish, but overall, nine out of 10 pictures I take are stunning and phenomenal, and some pictures in great lighting, you can't tell the difference between this and some DSLRs. Now the screen, I really like the S6 screen. I just think it just looks amazing, and it just pops out, and just everything looks good on the S6, but give me the Moto X enhancements on top of that. So the breathing notifications, I know that's more software, but um, when I think of the Moto X, I think about their screen and how they sort of have, like does that breathing notification type of thing. I love that, so give me that on my phone as well. And of course, we gotta have front facing speakers, something that you can find on the Idol 3, the M8, or the Nexus 6. Um, I like the way the Idol 3 does it. It kind of blends in really well, but front-facing speakers I think are a must, especially when you do a lot of multimedia on their phone, like I do, front-facing speakers. Now as far as software, I'm pretty sure everyone's gonna agree on this, stock Android. Give me a vanilla version of Android, please leave your skins at home and give me just the vanilla version of Android. All right guys, that was it. That was my video of the perfect smartphone. As always, a big thank you to Ash Taylor, QB King 77, and also Amando Ferreira for chiming in and really helping out. If you're not subscribed to these guys, go ahead and subscribe to them right now. Head down below and click on their names and subscribe to their channel. And also guys, if you're first time watching me, well, hey, welcome to my channel. Make sure you go down there and hit that subscribe button, hit that like, and drop me a little comment because I wanna know what is your perfect smartphone? Let me know. As always guys, I'm Kevin the Tech Ninja. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to my channel for more great videos and giveaways. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.